top 10 formatting tips in Google Sheets. Today we're doing a rundown of our top 10 tips for sheets formatting. Let's see how many you know. Tip 1. Select all data. First, let's look at a quick keyboard shortcut to help us select data. In this example, I would like to select all of the numerical data. The data runs off the page, so rather than dragging across and down with my mouse, I would like to cleanly and quickly select all this data. Start by selecting the top right hand cell for your data. Hold down Ctrl and Shift and press the right arrow. You can see that this has highlighted the row. It will highlight each cell until it hits an empty cell. Now I want to highlight to the bottom of the column. Keeping Ctrl and Shift held, press the down arrow. And there you go. With two taps of your keyboard, you have selected all your data. Tip 2. Alignment options. Let's look quickly at vertical align. Now, many of us are familiar with horizontal align, which allows us to align text or numbers left, right, or centrally inside the cell. Vertical alignment is often forgotten, and it is very useful to ensure that your numerical data is spaced in the most reader friendly way. The vertical align menu can be found next to horizontal align. You can see here the alignment is possible to the top of the cell, to the bottom of the cell, or to sit comfortably in the middle. I highly recommend working with large data sets that you use the central vertical align. Tip three, custom row resize. Setting a custom size for rows or columns will save you a lot of time in a spreadsheet. In my spreadsheet, I wish to resize all my rows to one very specific row height. Using my shortcut to highlight the top row and then highlight down so that all rows are highlighted. Right click on the selected data. Here you can see the resize option and which rows you have selected. I am selecting rows two to 142 and I'm going to resize these all in one go. The default setting here will fit the row to the size of the data. We are going to elect a specific row height and I would like my row height to be exactly 25 pixels. Tip four, custom number formatting. Data formatting can be very frustrating and access to this functionality has gotten a lot better. You can see here from the toolbar, a quick access to formats, which enables you to quickly find the most popular data formats. I have selected the data I wish to format and I click the format menu. By hovering over the number option, I can view all available number formats. At the bottom, you can see three custom format settings for numbers, custom currency, custom time and date, and custom number. I will select custom number. The pop-out that appears has a field for my format string, a sample of how the format will appear, and a list of default formats to choose from. I can use a default to start to build my string. For example, this default, which has a number and two decimal places. I want a euro sign to appear in any data I enter into the cell. So I will add this here. And in the sample below, I can see how the number will appear. My spreadsheet may contain negative numbers. So I also need to tell Sheets how to manage these negative numbers. First, add a semicolon to your string. The sample box now displays the positive number format and is now looking for a negative number instruction. Copy and paste the positive number, add a minus after the semicolon and paste the positive number. This will now set the negative number format. In my document, a number of cells are registering a zero balance, which displays a 0.00. .00. Visually, it makes it difficult to pick up on any cells which contain a legitimate balance. I want to display a dash in any cells that have a zero. Add a semicolon to the string after the negative format. You will now see that Sheets is looking for zero formatting. Simply add a dash and click apply. Immediately, you can zero in on the important information in your spreadsheet. Tip five. Alternating colors. 
Employing alternating colours is a great way to make your database more visually accessible, and it's very simple. Highlight the data in your database. Then from the Fill icon on the toolbar, select Alternating Colours at the bottom of the menu. A pop-up will appear. If you have included the header line of your data, ensure that header is ticked. But if, like me, you selected only the data, untick header. This will colour only the rows. Next, select a colour combination from default styles. And note, it is possible to customise your style with custom colours. Once the style is complete, select Done. The alternating colour makes it much easier to follow the data as it moves along the row. Tip 6. Border options. Now that the rows are well defined, we might define the columns. We can do this using the border options available. In the border menu, you might be familiar with the types of border you can apply, either internally or to the edge. But consider your border colour and style. Click on the colour icon to select the standard palette or a custom colour. To provide a subtle delineation, we recommend using one of the dark grey options. This will provide a soft border. Consider also the style. A hard line can visually break up the data, but employing a dotted line in conjunction with the grey colour can provide a light touch border that helps to draw the eye to the column without breaking up the flow in your database. Tip 7. Text wrapping and rotation. In more text-heavy databases, how you display your text can be very important to how efficiently you complete your tasks. Take, for example, this tracker document. In many of the cells, the text is too long to display. And in the case of column E, the office area, I can resize the cell to accommodate the text. But in column I, we are capturing free text. The text explains the problem and so needs to be reviewed. It is often too long to simply resize the row, and if I add text in any of the following columns, the text in column I disappears. Selecting the column, I can access the text wrapping icon and choose Wrap Text. The row will now fit to the data on a cell by cell basis. Text rotation can help fit in overly long column titles. Highlight the cells and click the text rotation icon. In this case, I'm selecting tilt down. The text now runs from the top left to the bottom right of the cell, with a little tidy up to resize the row, wrap the text, horizontal and vertical align. The column headers really stand out. Tip eight, add checkboxes. When working in trackers or project databases, checkboxes can provide you with a quick to use visual confirmation. I wish to show that an issue has been confirmed in column H. Select the cells by placing the cursor in H3, holding Ctrl and Shift and hitting the down arrow. From the insert menu, select tick box. You now have a tickable checkbox. Tip 9. Add dropdowns. Not only do these speed up your data inputting, they can be essential to help maintain data integrity when you're intending to filter by or report on items in the dropdown. Select the cells in which you would like to add the dropdown before right-clicking. From the right-click menu, scroll down and select Dropdown. This will open the data validation rules and set the dropdown criteria for you. You now need only to add your options. Use the add another option to keep adding option boxes. Once all options have been added, you may wish to color code these options. This can be useful if you are assigning responsible people or adding a traffic light kind of status. Click the circle to the left of the option and select a color. Once complete, select done. Click the cell. Your users can now choose from the available options to fill in the cell. 
Tip 10. Freeze rows. Once we work in a document for some time, it really starts to grow and it can be frustrating when the amount of columns or the data starts to drive critical information or headings out of view. Lock these in place using the freeze function. Highlight the row and access the view menu. Hover over the freeze option and select up to row, in this case, row two. You can also do the same with the columns so that when you scroll across or down in the document, the information you need will stay within the window. We hope you get some new ideas from today's video. Let us know how you get on and until next week, see you then.